Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. It's Thursday, August 11th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. A production of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream is touring public parks this month, and it reflects many elements of black culture. You might see some dancing and a lot of influences from black house, from black queerness in the ballroom scene. You might see some voguing. You might see influences from everything. Musician and theater director Trey G speaks with St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin in just a few minutes. Teams from the Federal Emergency Management Agency are going through flood-damaged neighborhoods in St. Louis, St. Louis County, and St. Charles County, looking for people who need help following last month's record rain. Some may qualify for federal aid, but have not registered yet. Laverne Williams-Lacey has lived in University City for 40 years. Three of her cars floated away during the floods. She has registered with FEMA for helping repair her flooded basement. We need to do some repairs, so that's the main thing financially, and you need to replace items that we lost. I'm pretty sure we wouldn't be able to be bought out, or if we were, that'd be fine, but we wouldn't be able to sell, people knowing that this has happened more than twice. FEMA has already paid out nearly $1.5 million to St. Louis residents affected by last month's floods. A developer has big plans for 80 acres on the St. Louis riverfront just south of the Arch Grounds. The Midwest Newsroom's Kayvon Mansouri reports. The St. Louis Port Authority will vote on a resolution to consider Good Development Group's $1.2 billion proposal to develop a portion of St. Louis's riverfront. The plan, dubbed the Gateway South Project, aims to develop the area south of Interstate 64, known as Shoto's Landing, into a residential, retail, entertainment, office, and industrial area. According to board documents, the group owns approximately 50 acres of the 80 acres it hopes to develop in the area and plans to provide substantial improvements to infrastructure within that acreage. Little is known about the Good Developments Group, which according to its website is based in New York and St. Louis. The developer did not return a request for comment. For the Midwest Newsroom, I'm Kayvon Mansouri. At least one person has been hospitalized following a recycling company fire in Madison. At least eight departments battled flames at Interco. That's about eight miles east of downtown St. Louis. The cause has not been determined. Madison Mayor John Hamm III says the fire started in a battery recycling building. Smoke from the fire could be seen for miles and showed up on Doppler radar. A federal judge in Illinois has entered an order of contempt against the state's Department of Corrections over shoddy health care in prisons. A report by an independent monitor finds elderly patients did not get help eating, and they starved. Cancer went undiagnosed and spread killing people. And the monitor noted a patient with dementia signed a do-not-resuscitate order with just an X, something the monitor suspects could have been pushed by prison officials. Alan Mills is an attorney who filed the lawsuit that led to a legally binding agreement to improve health care. The kind of report that we saw here um, would would be cause for prosecution if it happened at a private nursing home in the city. Governor J.B. Pritzker is downplaying the importance of the contempt order, saying the judge has limited options for forcing faster change. Carbondale is poised to be a destination for patients seeking abortion care, as states continue to restrict access after the U.S. Supreme Court decision that overturned Roe v. Wade. Jennifer Fuller reports. At least two abortion providers have announced plans to relocate to southern Illinois as a result of the new restrictions following the Dobbs decision. Jennifer Pepper is CEO of Choices, which is based in Memphis, but will open a clinic in Carbondale next month. It feels a little like the land of milk and honey to us. Uh, We're actually, we're very excited about being able to provide care in that way without all of the additional uh, time sucks and barriers that people put into place. Pepper says the clinic will offer services other than abortion, including gender-affirming care when it opens. I'm Jennifer Fuller. A production of A Midsummer Night's Dream is touring public parks around St. Louis and the Metro East this month. Musician Trey G. directs a six-person cast in an interpretation that infuses black culture into Shakespeare's tale while challenging gender roles and celebrating queerness. St. Louis Shakespeare Festival is producing the show. St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin 
asked Trey G how this version differs from others. We're kind of taking an Afrofuturistic approach. I've added some music that's really inspired by just true blackness and house and futurism, um, but also very current and now. I'm really excited to just kind of merge my life, also our costume designer who's from St. Louis, Brandon Vaughn. He's been such an influence to St. Louis and what black fashion could look like here. So I think it's a perfect merge for us to like create this world together. So did the, did St. Louis Shakespeare approach you and, and specifically say we'd like a, a staging of this that's different from what we've done in the past? Yes. They literally said, hi, would you be interested in coming and doing a midsummer that included an all-black cast, but literally you could bring you as yourself as Trey G and whatever that meant. <laughs> so of course I said, absolutely. Oftentimes we're hired and we necessarily have to still follow the rules. Um, a lot of the times you approach this in a different way because you think it's like this Eurocentric kind of thing. Um, so I'm just really excited to just bring our young, youthful version of this to the community. And I'm hoping that maybe by some young black actor or some black queer actor gets a chance to see themselves represented on stage in a new light. We have a six person cast. Several women in the cast? Yes, we have an all film cast besides one who identifies as non-binary. Okay. Which is also really cool because we're really trying to take this approach where we see these characters in a new light, almost like androgyny. What if we took gender and gender norms out of the equation and we saw these people for humans and just the beings that they actually are? How would we experience love in a new way? How would we experience relationships in a new way? How does this perspective that you're talking about, that, that you bring, that the cast brings, how does that interact with what happens in Midsummer? We get a chance to actually strip down the characters in a new way. I'm just trying to find those new ways that we can connect to the story. And I'm literally trying to find those references that is black culture and what it means to be excellent, what it means to just be. And a, a lot of the questions in rehearsal have been, what is Afrofuturism? Or like, what is black joy? And I really feel like it's literally just us being, us showing up, just us being in space, taking up space. So that alone is enough. And a lot of times we're told that's not enough. see some dancing and a lot of influences from Black House, from a Black queerness in the ballroom scene. You might see some voguing. You might see influences from everything. Is Midsummer good material to be able to have some fun with it and throw some music in there and, and do some different things? Yes. The script is funny. <laughs> so yes, it's great material that we get to play around with, that we get to explore through our black experiences. Um, it's so funny, like even like the mechanicals, we've been approaching it from, what if these were like the deacons at church in this basement, like Baptist church? Um, and them putting on a play, which a lot of the times in our community we do, and that's our first experience to art. So we have, we've really been trying to find our own experiences and our own black experiences and how can we lend it to the things that are necessarily already written. Um, and actually, it's been a great merger. That was Trey G speaking with St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin. Our David Casares edited that report. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. Have a great day. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com.